Hi, my name is Alex with Atech Tech Tutorials, and in today's episode, I have the honor of interviewing one of the most famous and influential people in the Atlassian community. In this episode, I present to you a conversation with Jimmy, a man that is like Madonna and doesn't need a last name. Are you tired of struggling to present your data in a clear and visually compelling way within Jira? Look no further. Introducing custom charts for Jira by our good friends over at Old Street Solutions. They provide the ultimate solution for powerful and customizable data visualization within Jira. Old Street Solution is the official sponsor for our Thursday at Lasting Community Member interviews. Use the link in the description down below to start a free trial of custom charts for Jira today. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this interview. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section down below. Let's jump into the interview. Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking to Jimmy Seddon. And we are going to be discussing all the various things of Atlassian and Jira with him and getting to know him a little bit better. So thank you very much, Jimmy, for joining. And um, I'm looking forward to our discussion. Why don't we start off with our origin story? Because I actually don't know a lot, whole lot about you. I know that you got the very, very, um, very well-respected and well-known attire. <laughs> and that's usually how I see you with your silhouette. But other than that, um, other than other than what you post on YouTube, I don't know a whole lot. So why don't you tell the audience here a little bit of your origin story? Where did you come from? Where how did you start off with this in this world? And and yeah, let us know a little bit about you. Sure thing. Uh, first off, thank you for having me. Um, I really appreciate you reaching out to uh, to get me to chat about these sorts of things. Um, my origin story is a funny one. A lot of people think I've been around forever, but I actually haven't been. Uh, 2019 is when I first started in the ecosystem as is. Um, I had been, at that time, I think a uh, an admin at a small company, um, solo, sort of managing the tools for five or six years. And, you know, I'd heard all about the summits being a big thing. And I thought, eh, I don't really ask for a lot of things from the company. Can I go to one of them? And they said, sure. You know, it, it it's probably going to be good for me to learn some things. Um, so I wasn't really involved in the community. I just sort of stumbled through things on Google as is or just maintain things on my own. Um, I went to the summit. Um, I saw one of the community leader panels. Um, I saw all the people and how great everyone was and not just, you know, the vendors and the Atlassian team members, but just other customers and how willing everyone was to just sort of help one another. And I kind of embraced that. And so uh, where I was, there wasn't a lot of career growth for me. I was just the guy who did the Atlassian things. So I used the community as an outlet to not only learn, but share what I had learned. So uh, when I got back from that, it was one of those things where I, I just started diving in head first. And, you know, a couple of months after doing a whole bunch of answering questions, I was invited to the authors group. So I started writing a few things. And uh, July of 2019, I was invited into the community leader program and haven't looked back since. Nice. And um, so talk to me. So I, I spoke with Rodney, the Jura guy, and I yeah. spoke with Andy, the fun man Andy. Why no name for you? <laughs> or do you have one that I just don't know about? <laughs> um, I don't know. It, it's kind of been one of those things where uh, Jimmy's kind of what everyone knows me as. So, you know, I have actually been, you know, asked by people who, you know, if you look on me on LinkedIn, it says James, which is, you know, my actual name, but people are like, are you Jimmy in the community? And it's just, yeah, that that's me. Yeah. So it's just, so yeah. Just go with Jimmy then. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Cool. Um, the next question, um, out of all the tools, right? Like there's so many different uh, tools out there. Why Atlassian? Like how did you stumble on Jira? Like how did Jira become like the one that you've latched onto? Was it just so, because of <laughs> We'll go back to the origin story for a second. Um, so before I was an Atlassian admin, I actually worked for an Atlassian competitor. Um, and then they were bought out. And it was one of those things where, you know, the whole boy out process either goes really well or it doesn't. Um, it wasn't something that I was enjoying. So I moved companies um, out of my control. They decided after it was a small startup when they started using paid tools instead of free tools. Um, decisions were made to start using Atlassian. And the person who was in charge of 
managing things, didn't really want to do it. A lot of the things looked very familiar to what I had used in the past as, you know, working in QA for um, a different company. So I said, you know, I'm happy to do it because I, I understand these things. And that's kind of where things started. Um, and then, you know, it's just, it's been one of those things where the Atlassian ecosystem is awesome. Um, everyone wants to see everyone else do well. So I, I've kind of just latched on and, you know, made it a career. Awesome. That's really, really cool. Yeah, the, the Alaskan ecosystem is a very interesting one. I, I I look at like all the other tools and it's it's hard to find another another platform that has this level of community. Um, especially yes. within like I mean there's obviously a bunch of other tools in the world, right? But but just within like these like project management or agile related tools, like it's it's hard to find that big of a following and, and from what I've seen. So that's awesome. Um, biggest lesson you've learned since you started doing all this, like, what do you typically do? Like, are you an admin? Are you a scrum master? What, what, what do you do in your like normal? Use yeah. Computer, and then some big lessons that you learned from that. So I'll say I started as the guy who managed the tools, but also a, a build master. So I started my career in support, moved into development and, um, when I sort of took on the the ownership of that, I was also owning all of the release process. So I'll say the biggest lesson I have learned is all about branch management because I have absolutely screwed up releases before, and I've been there um, too. <laughs> you know, it it it, it happens. Um, I think the the most important lesson I have learned, um, which you know is working for great companies, being honest about the fact that you've made a mistake. And that everyone will rally around helping you fix it as opposed to trying to hide it is the most important thing you can do. Um, my day to day now, I am a full time admin. Um, so my job is supporting R&D folks um, with Atlassian's, uh, sorry, cloud premium. Um, we're using Jira software service management and Confluence. Uh, and then also keeping my ear to the ground on everything new that Atlassian has coming out. So, you know, using our sandbox environment to try and sign up for any EAPs so that we can, you know, have an advanced look at them, um, looking at new products such as Compass and Atlas to sort of see if there's any potential that they'll help some of the the things that we're using. So that that's what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. So, so that brings up an interesting question. One that I was going to kind of ask towards the end, but I'll kind of fast forward here, but sure. <laughs> since you're on that, you're on the prowl, right? So you're like me, we're on the prowl for like EAP, the new stuff coming out, right? Just to be on the bleeding edge here. But that can sometimes be scary, right? It's scary. There's not a whole lot of documentation. The UI is changing still quite a bit. How do you approach learning these things and, and becoming good at it? Like, what's your style, technique? Tips? So I think Atlas is a great example of this. Um, when I first got involved, um, it was still called Project Watermelon. So that was even before it was Team Central and Beta. Like, it was very early on. And you're right. There was no documentation. Um, you fumble around in the dark a lot. There are things that don't work the way they're supposed to. I think you just need to approach it from having worked in software development. You know, and when it's in beta or even at that stage, it was in alpha. Um, expect that things are going to be challenging, and just have patience with the the development team. So everything I've been involved in, um, I have had direct contact with the product team that's working on it. So. You have just regular conversations of, hey, you know, these are the struggles we're having. What can you do to help us? And, you know, the the teams at Atlassian are really good about wanting you to be successful in that and wanting to take your feedback and try and use that to to make the product better itself. So that's cool. Yeah. Um I I definitely saw that when Atlassian. Um I posted a video not too long ago about why I wouldn't recommend going to Confluence Premium and at last and like reached out and we had like an hour long conversation at team. They're like, talk to us about that. Why, why, awesome. what, what could we do? And it was so funny because like all the things I talked to her, because this was a uh, Tuesday night um, that we did this little talk. Well, Wednesday morning was the keynote and she was like, you're going to be really excited when you go to the keynote awesome. tomorrow. Because <laughs> like everything I wanted or would have liked in the product, it was like basically announced. Awesome. Um, the yeah. next morning. So it's really, really cool. But yeah, um, I try to jump into these tools, right? So, um, but how do you balance them? Like taking time to learn new aspects or new features of Jira or, or Atlassian tools with like always doing your job, right? Like consistently being inundated with work. 
So I'm going to say this much. I work for an awesome company. Um, that is a thing that they encourage. So, um, you know, it, exploration and not just for me with Atlassian, but everything we do, uh, exploration is encouraged because the idea is we, we don't want to just pigeonhole ourselves into the way that we've always done things. We want to look at what's new, what might be better, see if it's actually something that we should consider because, um, you know, you don't want to miss an opportunity like that. Okay. Yeah. And what motivates you then? Because having curiosity is one thing, right? But actually like rolling up your sleeves and trying this trial by fire thing, it's not for everybody, right? Like you gotta, you gotta really have that like little fire under you to like keep you going because the unknown, there's unknown unknowns is scary for most. Yeah. Um, so the team that I work on, um, we're handed a lot of stuff that we don't know. Um, it'll be a, Hey, you know, um, we, we need you to, we need someone who knows something about, uh, Google Cloud pa Platform specifically because there's this use case we want to try. And we're like, okay, well, who knows anything about it on the team? And everyone just starts shaking their head no. And it's just a, okay, um, who wants to dive in and take a look at this? Now, obviously, I focus more on the Atlassian side of things. So, you know, everything Atlassian comes to me. But, um, you know, I, I I feel like my team, we we kind of feel like we're, we might be broken in that sense where we, we don't have the fear of the unknown. It's It's one of those things where, um, we know that we're not experts in it. We know that we're going to very much be learning on the fly and everyone is okay with the fact that we're going to know just a tiny little bit more than everyone else, but also well aware that we don't know everything that's yeah. going on. But, but how do you find like a threat to start? Because like, usually when I start something new, I just feel overwhelmed with like, where do I even begin? And then once I, um, then I find something, I'm like, but then I have like, a infinite amount of options and I'm like which path do I take how do I like bring myself back <laughs> so that's like the stuff that just always gets to me I think we try and look first at what problem we're trying to solve I, I think that's where it is so you know Atlas is a great example and you know this will be a bit of a, a preview spoiler depending on how quickly this goes out um okay, for the, so the next, next it may weeks. actually be after the um the massive community virtual event that's happening on the 7th um where this I'm going to talk go about this after. Yeah, this will go awesome. after you. So, yeah. So I'll be talking about this as a part of that, um, which was a our aha moment. We were floundering with Atlas for about six months before we were sitting in a meeting and we realized, wait, why are we all sitting in a status meeting going through a, a spreadsheet to sort of say where the, the status is instead of just going into Atlas, creating projects for all of those things, everyone provides an update and then that's just, you know, fed to a feed for our manager as opposed to everyone wasting a whole bunch of time. So I think it's it's finding that use case of what problem do we have that we want to stop doing? And, um, you know, once we found that, it, it's very simple to yeah. sort of say, okay, that's the direction we want to focus on and see if the tool can allow us to, to solve that problem. Um, we've also done the same thing with assets in JSM of, oh my. we know there are things we need to track and we have failed multiple times of what we want to accomplish. And, you know, but at the same time, we, we know what we're trying to solve. It's just trying to make the tool work the way we want it to. Assets, man. That's like my biggest nightmare of Jira. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's like the hardest. It's like the hardest yet most simplest thing to do. But boy, I think it's because there's too much flexibility, right? Like, yeah, because like you have so many options, yeah. you're trying to solve for the world as opposed to maybe the the simple case you have right now. And that that's sort of one of the biggest things we've learned thus far is don't solve for tomorrow, solve for right now. And then, you know, add on after. Awesome. Yeah. No, and I'm definitely going to give Atlas a try. You're actually the first person I've spoken to ever. That's like, Hey, we're using Atlas. Um, Cause I've seen it. I've seen it in my Jira. And I just never really, I, I've clicked into it, but never done anything. Never even set up a project or anything. Just kind of let it. Just look at it, because I, I, my life is always inside of Jira and or Confluence or JSM. Yeah. But um, now you're trying to I, I'm being convinced that I should definitely <laughs> give uh, Atlas some love, <laughs> maybe even make some videos this summer for it. Cool. Possibly. All right. Um, next up. So <clears throat> out of all the plugins in the marketplace, what's the one you can't go without? And I think I can ask you this question, because Andy, I couldn't really ask, because obviously he'd be very biased. <laughs> and I think uh, I think with uh, the Jira guy, He's he's constantly being very sponsored by various yep. vendors. So I don't know I don't know what your background is, but if, if you have a conflict, let me know. But otherwise, I'd be very curious. Um, so I'll say this much: I don't have any conflicts, and that's by choice. Um, 
I have had people reach out and offer sponsorship for things. That's not my goal of the way that I've run the YouTube channel. It's it's all about trying to reach people on a different platform to bring them into the the Atlassian community, whether it's online or in-person ones. So that's what I'm trying to do is just reach out to people and bring them into the community. Um, so I generally turn down any sponsorship because I want the creative control over every video that I do, that this is my opinion. These are my thoughts. I'm not being influenced yeah. by someone else. So um, I, I want to answer that two ways uh, because we, we have two main things that we use, completely different use cases because one's for Confluence and one's for Jira. Um, for Jira, Hero Coders uh, Checklist Pro is the one thing that we heavily use everywhere. Um, we started trying to use the free one, realized that uh, for the level that we want to use it at, we needed the pro version, and they've been awesome. Their support is amazing. They're very responsive. Um, for Confluence, uh, we're head deep into Gliffy, so um, that's sort of the, the main two that we're using um, okay. on a regular basis. Yeah, there's there's usually some plugin or two that most companies just can't live without. Um, yeah. I know I... I've been using custom charts from a very selfish uh, Chris reached out, right? But as I got into it, man, like, holy moly, like, we had to use this thing everywhere. <laughs> so custom like... charts, I mean, I've got a, a very interesting relationship with them that I know a number of their people. Um, the problem that we have had in the past is that they just don't meet the the security requirements that our company requires in order to, to sort of go any further than just a, a conversation of, hey, we like this. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great, uh, great point. Yeah, I sometimes wish like the Alaska Marketplace gives you at least when you're in the cloud, right? They give you like, well, they're they're part of our security program, but who, where's the data? Like, who's owning the data? There's a lot of questions. I think not just custom charts, right, but across. Most yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, uh, most applications, it's like it's a very great area. Very, very great. Though that was announced in the keynote, that they're, they're trying to make that a little bit more visible and a little bit better. So I, I am excited to see that that information is going to be a lot easier to find, hopefully, um, so that it's not quite so much of a chore of, okay, is this something that we can actually go with because they you know, meet all the, the security concerns and requirements that we have up front, yeah. so. That's interesting though, like um, most companies, are you, I'm assuming you guys are cloud-based or you- We are cloud-based, yeah. Because most companies within the cloud, they're kind of just like, well, you know, we're using the SaaS already, so <laughs> we're taking a risk already anyways. Um, but I, I know definitely people that are data center, they're like, no, we're data center for a reason. We want to own all this stuff. Yeah. Or, we're, or at least we're on a contract with our supplier or vendor or buyer that we have to own the data. So it's it's it gets a little bit more complicated there. Yeah. We all know that Jira's dashboards are a little lackluster. Wouldn't it be cool if you could significantly make your metrics and reports better? With custom charts for Jira, you can transform your raw data into stunning charts and graphs that make an impact. No more settling for the default Jira reports or spending hours manually manipulating data in a spreadsheet. Go show our friends at Old Street Solutions the power of the internet and show them your support and start a free trial to custom charts for Jira today. Cool. Well, that's interesting, uh, or that's fun. Um, the YouTube channel, though, um, I did. I, did, I had to ask you. I saw your video on 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 the on the book. Yes. Like, how did you scan it in there? Did you get like a e version? Because I have a physical book, and I'm like, how did this get into that? <laughs> so I have the physical book as well. Um, they actually uh, have a community post, um, which I think I linked in that video, that gives you a link to the PDF version PDF. of it. Okay. Yeah, yes. I gotta go watch the description, read people's descriptions more than I just watch the video. <laughs> but yeah, so there there is a link to the PDF version of the book. The PDF version is free, obviously. So I was looking at it, I'm like, how do I want to do this? I'm like, you know what? I should just do the PDF version. I can set the screen up very easily to to make it very visible and displayed. Yeah. So yeah. So so when you're looking though, at like Jimmy's like, all right, I got X amount of hours. I want to make a video. Like, what what goes through your thought process? Like, what makes it onto YouTube versus what? What stays on the shelf? Um, a lot of what I want to do is unique things. So there are tons of people such as yourself who do amazing beginner tutorial things. I don't want to do the same thing that everyone else is doing. I, I want the stuff that you're coming to my channel for is going to be obviously the community roundups because I've had a lot of feedback that having a video slash audio version of it where people can on their commute just listen to me going over the, the highlight notes. 
um, as opposed to having to read the the article itself has been very, very beneficial for them. So that's why I continue doing that. The article itself takes the majority of the time to write, and then it doesn't take me much time to to just do a quick narration of everything yeah. I've written. Um, yeah, uh, the Ronnie and I were getting together to start our own like uh, podcast as well. Nice. I right? think so we want to talk more admin stuff and things of that nature. So we we're, were like, he, I was like, look, I'm I'm dominating the video space here because I it, it is easy for me. Although let me tell you, it took me three years to finally get comfortable enough to be in front of a camera <laughs> like awesome. i i started a youtube channel at least three years ago never did anything until like very most recently so this is the hardest hurdle ever for me and he's got that written space dominated and we're like look we need to hit like all three audio video and and um video right audio video and written form <laughs> yeah and, um, and and so we're like how do we do this how do we do this where we're not redundant so we actually had the idea i was like hey ronnie i'll give you all my videos and convert them into blog posts and i'll take all your blog posts and make them into videos because like none of his stuff has any video aspect yeah. to it so and and all my stuff doesn't have any text to it so yeah i mean i'm not trying to to be large um i just so the where i started the channel was it started as a community leader challenge back what would that have been late 2020 i want to say it was where the the community support team answers a lot of questions on the community and they wanted to take some of the top things that they are asked on a regular basis and have people do video tutorials so that they can just link to those as the answer for people on various things is that a thing um, that's allowed then because i've always felt very very shameful like answering the community question with the video i think it's one of those things where if it's a common use case topic type of thing um they're okay with it. it it's one of those things where you know they obviously don't want every single you know individual sort of oh, exception exactly. case answered yeah. but uh so like the three that i covered were all organization admin features around adding a new organization admin um removing uh or admins and site admins and you know a bunch of things in that nature and that was the challenge i did it without a camera i didn't have very good equipment and I enjoyed putting together some things like that. I knew that at um, access is something that a lot of people struggle in setting up. So I'm like, you know what? That's going to be the first thing I focus on is just getting the things I need, doing a tutorial on all the five sort of main steps of things you're going to need to set up. And people have enjoyed that video series. Um, from there, it was just doing unique things that no one else is necessarily covering. Um, as far as the book, it was one of those things where I'm like, I don't think anyone else is going to think of doing this and it's kind of like it's not a tutorial it's kind of fun because it's you know atlassian ish but not 100 percent there and uh yeah the the feedback on that video has been very positive so you know no, that's I, I what really i do i really really enjoyed it my kids looked at the book when i got back on team and yeah i mean i wish there was more i wish there was more series on that video <laughs> or on that on that book because it, it would make a, for an interesting like you know animated series or or even a game or something <laughs> yep cool all right so we we're down to the last few minutes here so i want to just kind sure. of sure we're pushing through so um if you could change one thing about lassian what would it be like if you can get your way with some features oh man is this you collecting people's hot takes on atlassian know, right? is that what you're doing <laughs> i i got andy i was like throwing a bunch of shades right um all right well because every once in a while i do wish like if i if I, if I could make my own like jira like what would i make <laughs> So I'll say this much. Um, you know what? I will give you a hot take as well. My most popular video is why do team managed projects exist? And that would be the one thing I would change. I think there's a lot of great innovation going into team managed projects, but I would just put them into company managed projects and do away with team managed projects. I think we're waste. I think Atlassian's wasting their time um, investing in both categories. I have yet to see a good use case at two different companies where a team managed project makes more sense than a company managed one. Yeah. Everyone I, who starts, they, they end up just wanting an admin to manage it for them. Um, that, you know, it, it ends up just being a pain point for me to have to manage a project that doesn't work the same way that the company managed ones do. Yeah. I always, uh, I have a running joke where it's like, cause I do a lot of teaching. I don't do a lot of like paid courses and stuff. And it's like, yeah. 
avoid the purple and i tell people always blue always blue always blue <laughs> yeah and then every once every class it's like why do you have so much hate to the purple and i'm like it's not that i hate the purple because i see the value i see why at last did it because they they're competitors right like click up money.com you look at their commercials it's like get started in minutes seconds really and you can't just jump into jira on a company managed project you can if you really want to but that's not the point <laughs> right and so those team ones get you into Jira running quickly. I feel like the people who want to run their own things, and this is my take, should just use a Trello board, to be honest. Like, if you look at where the, the team managed project started, they started before Atlassian actually acquired Trello. And it really feels like it was a meant to compete that way. And it's just now that you have Trello, just yeah. Except that they don't need to exist anymore and point people to Trello for those quicker. Up it's, and it's sentences. interesting you bring that up because at team, I was also talking to like the Jira work management, like product manager. Yeah. And I'm like, why do you exist? Because <laughs> yeah. like if you have Trello and Trello, because I always explain Jira work management as the wannabe Trello within Jira. Yep. And then, but I'm like, but she's like, oh, because you have non-technical teams that want to use Jira, but they don't, they don't want to commit to the whole thing. I'm like, yeah, but. Most of those non-technical teams are under the gun to still be agile and still plan sprints. So you can't do that in the work management one. And so I'm like, so they're still having to go into like a Kanban style yep. Jira software project because there's they gotta they gotta have similar metrics and similar processes as the rest of the organization. So work management goes like out the window. And and so I'm like, why? And then and then, then you got Trello. So I'm like, well, why am I picking one over the other? So I'm like, I don't understand why you exist. <laughs> the lady just started laughing. Oh, yeah. so <laughs> but okay, cool. Um, now, so this is going to be a, a little fun one here. Uh, what are, what's like something unique or special on how you use Jira? Like, what do you? Because so I was telling Ronnie, right? Like, I can look at any Jira in the world and I can see my DNA. Like, I know that I was here. I know I configured it. So anything spe special or specific in the way you admin Jira that you're like, this is Jimmy's Jimmy's DNA um wow uh i think if anything i did a video on my best practices on permissioning which i mean they're generally a a thing that most people will use but i've i'm converting people i think is more of it that the number of people admins that i know around are following the same strategy that i use where um roles are what you manage in a in a permission scheme and then you have groups that are attached to those roles and the group membership is done in Active Directory, Okta, wherever it is, and just synchronized in through Access. So that quite literally you make your IT team happy by saying, you guys control the groups. And then I have permissions set up that every time a new user starts, I don't do anything. It, yeah. It's already set up to go. They, they just need to add the user into the correct groups. They automatically have all the permissions they need someone moves between teams, they change the group membership, they already have everything they need. That That's sort of the the one thing I've been trying to do that, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the role-based um, aspect of it. It's just, it is hard to describe the relationship between roles and groups and... Yes. Because then you gotta go make the roles <laughs> and, then, and then you gotta go put them in the schemes and then, then you gotta go apply the schemes to the project and it's just like, I have yet to find a, a, an effective way to articulate all that without everybody just like, what did you do? <laughs> what do you want me to do? Well, at the same time, once you you've done it, and you know, once I I had the ability to hands on show uh, a few of the the admins I've trained on I that. Watch one of your videos. <laughs> once you've right. done it once, it it's one of those things where you almost never have to touch permissions again, and that's I think the thing I love about it is I don't really do permission management. I I did it once, and I never have to touch it again. Yeah, and then just to wrap this one up, what excites yeah. you most about the future of Atlassian? Oh man, um, I am both excited and terrified of um, intelligence. I, I see a lot of good applications. I see a lot of terrible applications at the same time. Um, one of the things I'm excited about was seeing the way in which you can generate JQL. Um, I do a lot of that for people on a daily basis. So the fact that I can just tell them, just use the the help bot to, to generate it for you and just tell and them what you want. Too. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm also terrified about the security concerns that I might introduce just with the, what can you do that like you have permission schemes that we've just been talking about. 
I, I'm concerned that you can use AI to potentially bypass security unless, you know, it. I know that they're going to to work on that, but it's just a, it, it's definitely a top of mind concern of mine that um, AI might be able to bypass things that you that weren't designed other... to be bypassed. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Cool. Well, thank you so much for your time. One last final question. I like to end this in like true um, hot one style. Um, sure. Where can people find you? Where can people find me? Um, I mean, right off the bat in the online community. Um, you'll find me in the Welcome Center. Uh, you'll find me in the Water Cooler. Um, I basically run the, the group man management of the Welcome Center. Um, you'll find me, uh, Jimmy Talks Jira, on pretty much every social media platform, including YouTube. Um, yeah, those are the places that but you'll find me. Don't look on Jimmy on LinkedIn because you will not find Jimmy on LinkedIn. <laughs> no, you, you won't. Um, but you got to look yes. at James. <laughs> yes. Great. Well, thank you again for taking the time here. Uh, Alex, thanks for having me here. This was this was a lot of fun. Thank you very much for watching this interview. I hope you really, really enjoyed it. And hopefully you gained something valuable and insightful from this interview. If you made it this far and you're not subscribed yet, I want to remind you that this video is part of the Summer of Atlassian 2.0 series. And that means that if you subscribe, you're going to help us crush our goal of hitting 10,000 subscribers before the end of the summer. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or anything you want to follow up with, let me know in the comment section down below. And then finally, make sure you smash that like button on this video. Take control of your data. Custom Charts for Jira offers an extensive range of chart types and customization options, whether it's a bar chart, pie chart, or line chart, or pretty much a bunch of other different types of charts that they have. Create stunning visuals that represent your data in Jira accurately, tailored specifically to your specific needs. Head on over to the Atlassian Marketplace and show Old Street Solutions the power of the internet and start a free trial of Custom Charts for Jira today. Also, as a final note, don't forget to check out The Jira Life. Link is in the description down below. The Jira Guy and I have launched an official The Jira Life podcast, and we'd love for you to be a part of this up-and-coming community in the Atlassian ecosystem. So make sure you go over there, subscribe, and join us every single Thursday where we go live and basically talk all things Atlassian and Jira. See you there. Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need